Hello there, uh, my name's Pete. Uh, welcome back to a, another session of um, electronic assisted astronomy with an 18 inch Schmidt Cascoin telescope, a CBC 800. Um, the camera attached is an Alta Astro 294C color camera. Um, it's outside right now, um, and we haven't actually done anything, we haven't set anything up. So I thought what we'd do first of all is just set it up together. Uh, so on the main screen, as you can see, we have um, this bit of a mess here, which is the camera just flicking over at four second exposure subs and it's pointing north. So it's horizontal and it's pointing north. So it's pointing um, into the trees, into a tree, should I say. And the neighbours are all that way as well. But luckily, completely defocused, as you can see. Um, what we also got up here is Stellarium, although we're not going to use that quite yet. Um, we've got CPWI. This is the 2.4.3 beta 11, which is the current beta. Oh, and Sharp Cap is the current beta uh, 4.1 uh, for that as well. It's got some nice new features in it that hopefully we can look at later on. Um, we're also going to use Astro Planner beta 16, which is a new beta, um, and that's got some nice new features as well. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to connect to the telescope and I'm just going to go click on the connection and I always connect via USB. I connect via the focuser control actually. Um, so I'm going to press on that. It's going to detect hopefully the telescope and it's going to connect the, uh, the focuser as well. So we've got the telescope and we've got the focuser and it's asking me to do a manual alignment. Now, be great if I had an observatory but I don't so because I don't have an observatory it means I throw it out onto the decking I point it roughly north I align it uh, flatten it as much as I can and um, so I then have to align it so I need to do an alignment just as if I was standing by the scope but I'm not standing by the scope which is good uh, so let's do a begin alignment and it's going to ask me if I'm actually ready to do an alignment and I'm going to say um, yeah I'm ready and it's going to default to the north. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and see what we've got. And I can use now this to take a look at what we've got up there. I think denim's too low. We could try actually sheet. We could try sheet. Um, you don't want to go too near the north. Is denim too low? No, we're going to try sheet. Go sheet. So when I click on it, a little yellow circle comes. And I say go to sheet and the telescope will start to move. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to um, lock my sky view onto there. And I'm going to change this to find and frame and load it up. Go into um, find mode, which go into find mode, which kind of puts across there, does a few other things. Let me connect as well. I didn't connect a minute ago to the telescope and to the focuser. And I'm also going to stretch the image using the display histogram stretch so I can see what's going on. And straight away we can start seeing stars shooting across. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not a bright star. So I'm off. And the reason I'm off is because I just roughly eyeballed it north and I roughly um, eyeballed it that it was horizontal to the ground. I'm going to use something called plate solving. So we're going to take a picture of the sky, compare it to a database and go, actually, mate, you're not there. You're so many degrees or bits of a degree off. Now I'm still using, I'm using a half second exposure. Now this usually works. Let's just give it a go. If it doesn't work, I just increase the exposure. Now I'm using Astat. Oh, that was good. Just found it. There you go. So off we go again. I was two degrees off. It's not too bad, is it, for just laying it up and there is the star that I expected to see. Now I need to get that star so that it's in the center of the cross and once I achieve that oh yes I'm also going to come from this quadrant upwards. Now I'm using um, a new a newish feature in SharpCat which flips the image so what I, what you would see and what I would see um, if we were looking, this is exactly what it would look like if you see what I mean. Um, it matches the view for the Stellarium, for example, um, and also for CPWI. Um, but it does seem to take a bit of processing power. Now there is an i5 uh, Series 8 laptop outside with four cores, and eight threads and 16 gigs of RAM running with an NVMe drive, one terabyte NVMe drive. Um, but it seems that putting on the flip does add a certain amount of um, processing power. 
I've limited the frames, even though it's half a second, um, I've still limited the frames to four frames a second. I appreciate that's not half a second, but um, there you go. I think we're pretty pretty much there. So what I do is I go down into CBWR and I click on Centered, and it suggests some more ones. I'm actually just going to go to Alpharats first, because um, it's nearby. We're, what, sometimes it takes two plate solves. Sometimes, because I'm lazy, it takes two plate solves. Let's see where Alpharats is in the view. This is too far away. I'll be lazy and go, it's not too bad. The only problem is um, I need to be over this quadrant and bring it up this way. So I'm going to come back where it should be. Now, this also has a tendency to um, take up the backlash. So even though there's backlash um, compensation for these axes, I've noticed that where my telescope is getting a little bit old, I think there's, oh, well, when I say look, getting old, 14 years old, when some telescopes are older than that, obviously, I would say there was wear and tear, but I'm also wondering whether there was an issue, any manufacturing errors, I mean, that may well have caused certain parts of it not to be quite as accurate as others. So there you go, I'll just, um, update it. So we're at the center now. So I click on centered um, and we can move on. Uh, where should we go? Let's go to uh, it Hamel in Aries. Hamel. Off we go again. So that was quite good. So the first one we were only two degrees off. We did a plate solve. It found it. We went to the second star, which is Alpharats, and it was almost dead on. Um, now we're going to go to Hamel uh, in Aries, and we will see where we are. Now that's not dead on. So what I'm going to do, because I'm lazy, I'm going to do a plate solve on that. So that was more surprising. I would expect it to be um, closer than that. There we go. So now we're there. So now I just move this up again. To be fair, Alpharats wasn't that far away from as it shoot, wasn't it? So And we still did put it in the field of view of the of the camera. It's hopping around a bit. Okay, let's say we're centered on that. Uh let's move to another one. Um we could do Mars, but I'm gonna do um Aldebaran. Now, this is going to take us to the south. This is going to go through the meridian and take us um, to the eastern meridian. Now, what I've noticed with the scope, and um, if anyone wants to tell me why, it has a tendency now to go uh, to make the actual image go up. So the first thing I do, I think it's backlash because the first thing I do if I go when Aldebaran arrives, there's Aldebaran. So I'm just going to go straight up. And then I'm going to come straight down. Now, I don't have to do this when it's to the west of um, the meridian. I'd really love to know why, but I've just got used to doing it now, so it doesn't, you know. Let's jog it a bit more. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to say that's centered, which it is. Uh, let's go to El Nath, which is another little jump, but um, it's asking me to do two to the east and two to the west. And I, I've done four, so this is my fifth one now. I've done three in the west and now two in the eastern. So this just the same as I did just now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up. Do you see how it drifted up there? And if I just leave it, it will calm down. But it's obviously backlash. Um, I'm also going to move it back in direction because we were not actually where we hoped we wanted to be. So I'll come that way a bit. And then we'll come back down again. And that looks like a white, a very bright star. 
as in very luminous star. I don't know if it is or not. But the colour is quite bright, isn't it? Quite white. Might have come down a bit too much on that, but we're centred. So there we go, we've centred. Um, the error was what? 54 minutes? Hmm. No, it's 54 seconds, sorry, my fault. Yes. No, not too not too bad, I suppose. Uh, let's finish. And we'll exit out of that. Um, the only thing I'm going to do is let's go to somewhere. What's that star there? Focus, let's go there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, fo I'm going to actually um, uh, focus it. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the word. So I'm going to focus this, the telescope up. Now, to be fair, it's pretty much in focus already. Um, it has the same problem, you see, even though it's done that. So I'm going to go back out. And I'm going to come back in. And I'm going to switch to, um, let's all focus. I'm going to load that in to Sharpcat, which is a two second exposure. I'll just reset my histogram stretch. Um, so there you go. And I'm going to do a multi-star um, FWHM. i going to move my book out of the way. Oh, this is Sue French's uh, Sky Wonders. Hold on. Deep Sky Wonders. It's a fantastic book. So, uh, well, recommended. So I'm going to limit my exposure to yeah, stars. So I'm going to limit it to focusing on these stars in the middle here. Um, I'm going to come out 40, which is the normally what I do. My backlash is set to 150. Um, so it's actually going to go out 190 and come back in, which is the reason it's smeared so much. I'm going to reset that. And now I'm going to press in and it's going to come in. Oh, let's look at the options. It's going to come in on uh, scan step size of 10 it's going to do 15 of them with two samples at each location let's um start now this usually works pretty well um if there's cloud floating across if uh the sky is a little bit wobbly um if even a satellite goes through the field of view sometimes i've noticed it does affect this but we'll see. So right now we are, um, let me move myself out of the way as well. So we've, we've got the first three points, four points, five points. There we go. So we've got, we're not quite, we can see the curve could be made soon. So we're getting down to best focus. I think we were out a bit, but not far enough for the um, plate solving not to work, which it sometimes doesn't if you're not focused properly. So I was going to say the, the plate solving I was using is, um, is ASTAP. It's a bit faster, but I do have all sky plate solver set up as well. And sometimes if ASTAP does fail because of environmental issues or my incompetence, then um, all sky plate solver usually solves the, runs the day. And you can just configure that in the sharp cap settings. So which one you want to use. So here we go. We're getting a nice curve there. So it's most probably going to try one more time and then hopefully could tell us it's found it, or maybe more than one more time. No, no, there it is. So again, it has to go all the way back out again. So it applies the 150 offset out and then comes back in again to the position where it was. And um, we're there. So we're focused. Um, and that's how we've, that's how we set, set up the scope, really. Um, that's how we align. That's how we focus. And now we're ready for the evening's entertainment. So, um, I'll leave you with that for now and hopefully back soon with an actual observing session, which is far more interesting, I think you'll find. Bye-bye.